Hello again. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, and turn in the King James scriptures onto Proverbs chapter 11. Go there in the scriptures. You are expected to go in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Okay? We're going to be looking at and talking about consequences. Recompense. Okay? So, turn in your scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, to Proverbs chapter 11, we're going to be reading verses 23 on to verse 31. Okay? Go there, of course. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 23 on to verse 31, beginning at verse 23. The desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. There is that scattereth and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but tendeth to poverty. <clears throat> the liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. He that diligently seeketh good procureth favor, but he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. He that trusteth in his riches, things of the world, shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind, and the fool shall be, the, be servant to the wise of heart. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Right here, verse 31, right here. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. Much more the wicked and the sinner. Proverbs chapter... 22, one verse, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 8. Just one verse in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 8. Okay? <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 22, verse 8. He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity. 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 Okay? You reap what you sow, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Okay? And for the church of the living God, this does not affect your salvation today. I, I covered that in the video that I made before this. Okay? But you mess around in sin. You mess around with it. You make light of it. You play around with it. You justify it. Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Okay? Psalm 18. Work with me, fingers. Come on. Work with me. You're probably already there, aren't you? Good for <laughs> praise the Lord. Okay. Ay ay ay. <laughs> I got ay. <laughs> okay. Psalm eighteen, verses sixteen on to verse twenty-seven. Oh, I beg your pardon, brethren. I'm in the job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Psalm 18, verses 16 on to verse 27. He sent from above, he took me, he, draw, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy, and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. 
He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. Okay? Now, again, for today, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, okay, it is the righteousness of Christ. Christ's righteousness is, is imputed onto us. But the principle is you reap what you sow, whether it be good or whether it be evil, okay? You do evil as the church of the living God, doing that which displeases the Lord and that which is contrary to the scripture, no, you're not going to lose your salvation, okay? But you're going to destroy your life and your life is going to be a mess, okay? And you can try to hide it all day and all night. It's going to come out one way or another. Comprende? Let's continue, okay? For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. Do you note that? Okay? Again, we're not talking salvifically. This is for instruction and in righteousness right here, by the way. Not salvifically for today, okay? But out there, your life, your testimony, okay? Verse 22. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. You have the church of the living God. You get involved in sin. You might decide to put away his statutes from you. Don't want to read the word. And you fall back on that lame excuse. Oh, God knows my heart. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the reason you don't want to read this book, the scriptures, if you are of the church of the living God, and you are allowing your sin to rule your life, maybe it's because you know if you open the scriptures, the Lord is just going to tear your hide off. Let's continue. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. With the merciful thou wilt shew thyself merciful. With an upright man thou wilt shew thyself upright. With the pure thou wilt shew thyself pure. And with the froward thou wilt shew thyself froward. For thou wilt... Thou, for thou, eh, beg your pardon. <laughs> for thou wilt save the afflicted people, but wilt bring down high looks, pride, pride. See, sometimes we have, as the Church of the Living God. Because we are saved, eternally secure, going to heaven, okay? We sometimes think that we're not going to suffer consequences when we mess up, okay? And there are, the Lord can keep from you consequences of certain things that you have done. Yes, yes, he can. He can absolve those things from you if he so chooses to do so. But then again, sometimes he won't. Which means you better you better note and take care of how you walk with the Lord, because it could cost you dearly, my dear friends. Okay, go now to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 9 and 10. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. 
and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou, for that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Remember how Paul in the scripture says, when I was a child, I thought like a child, I spake like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. And that's not just talking about, you know, playing with toys or whatever. No, I thought as a child. Some of you need to grow up. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Because childhood and youth are vanity. They pass away. You're getting older. This skin suit that we're in is sagging. You ain't getting any younger. You're getting older. And that's inevitable. How are you walking? And let's look at a very good admonition here in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Okay, now we have to remember dispensationally, this is under the law. This is our instruction in righteousness. And uh, newsflash, there are actually quite a few commandments for us today in the time of the Gentiles within the Pauline epistles doctrine for us today. Quite a few. Verses 13 and 14 in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Okay? Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Go to Psalm 101, okay? Psalm 101. Psalm 101. We're going to read this whole psalm. I hope you can handle that, okay? Psalm 101. Here's some really good instruction and in righteousness for us today. I will sing... Of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. Yes, God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, is a God of judgment. Okay? Again, salvifically, eternally, our sins are not going to keep us out of heaven. Our sins are going to affect our rewards. And if you are have issues in your head and you're not concerned about your rewards in heaven... Yeah. 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 Okay, let's continue. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Okay? Not sinlessly perfect. There is no such thing as sinless perfection today. What is walking in a perfect way? Taking heed thereto according to thy word. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave unto me. What are you setting before your eyes, Church of the Living God? What are you setting before your eyes? Are you looking at things that you shouldn't be? Huh? Are you watching things that you shouldn't? Hmm? Because you got to remember what it says here. It shall not cleave to me. Okay? What this means is, you set something wicked before your eyes, it's going to cleave onto you. How? Memories. 
memories. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you straight away. You know one of the consequences that I suffer with daily because of my last, uh, my lost life and things I have done as a, as a part of the Church of the Living God? Memories. Memories. And I tell you something there, Church of the Living God. You fall into sin, you watch Hollywood movies, Hollywood programs, those images that you see can get ingrained in your head. And at the most obtruse moments, they can flash back at you. If you are of the Church of the Living God struggling with pornography, so-called struggling, what, what is the devil putting a gun at your head making you look at that? Yeah. Is that a struggle? Those images, they get lodged up here. And I tell you, as a lost man looking at pornography myself, those images are still here too. It's a consequence of setting wicked things before mine eyes. Forgiven? Yes. But those images they cleave to you. That's why it's a very good idea to set no wicked thing before your eyes. Let's continue. A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. The company you keep also is a very important thing, brethren. Now, when you're out there, you're amongst the lost world. Yes, you're amongst the lost. Yes. But are you hanging out with lost people? And don't give me this, well, Jesus hung out with, sin with sinners. No. He was preaching to them. He went to them to preach unto them that they might get saved by believing on him. Okay? He didn't go hang out with them being buddy-buddy. He went on to them. Here I am. I'm your, I'm your king. Believe on me. I'm your king. Here I am. That's why he sat with sinners. Okay? He wasn't hanging out as if they were homeboys or homegirls. That's nonsense. That's lunacy. Okay? If you're of the church of the living God, what kind of fellowship can you have with someone who is lost? Yeah, you are, you are of two different worlds, <laughs> so to speak. But I will not know a wicked person. Guess what? You ain't saved. You're a wicked person. If you're saved, you're a saved sinner. Saved by grace through faith. It's God's grace. You're still wicked. But it is by grace through faith. You, uh, uh, you, the church of the living God, what in the wide world of sports entertainment are you doing hanging out with lost people? What are you doing? It matters greatly what company you keep. It matters greatly. Because now look at this. Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Okay? Him that hath an high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. Proud look and a high, uh, a high look and a proud heart, slander. Is that not the um, mentality amongst many of the lost out there and these professing Christians?
Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. Right there. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Having true fellowship within the church of the living God, your brothers and sisters. Even if it's just you and another brother, you and another sister. Okay? Do you see the contrast uh, from verse 5 and verse 6? Verse 7. He that worketh the seed shall not dwell within mine house, within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all the wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Yeah, it matters tremendously the company you keep. Because for those who you may be hanging out with, their attitudes, their speech, things like that, little things can cleave to you. got to be careful you got to be very careful and here's another here's another one here's another one while we're talking about consequences Deuteronomy chapter 7 Deuteronomy chapter 7 Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 25 on to verse 26 Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 25 on to verse 26 again dispensationally this is under the law. Okay? But there's something very important to note here. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Their images of their gods. Television. These superhero movies. Little G gods like Superman, Batman, and all these Avenger twits. Hmm? You shall burn them with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it on to thee. Oh, they look so precious, don't they? They look so pretty, don't they? Thin is in, youth is king, right? Right? Don't they look so perfect on the television? Yeah. Yeah, that messes with your mind. Those images that you see, those graven images from the idiot box, they stick in your head. And what and what they pump out of their own, not even going to touch the mind control that's within television, okay? We can go off all day on that, but... You see all these things. What do you? It makes you want to want to be like that, doesn't it? Huh? See, watching television just opens the doors for devils, for lust, for temptation, for sin. Verse twenty-six. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. A cursed thing like it. A cursed thing like it. You realize you give yourself over to watching television movies, stuff like that. It's a cursed thing. Lest thou be a cursed thing like it. What are you putting before your eyes? And the consequence is. Lest thou be a cursed thing like it. Because what happens to you. Those images get burned in your head. You pick up things through your ears. The, the mind control tells you. Then is in. Youth is king. You have to have the new best clothes, new cars. Have to have the fancy schmancy cell phones. 
I'm working on that, Brother Matthew, so. There. <laughs> okay? <laughs> but thou shalt utterly detest it. And thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Yes, Church of the Living God, there are things we are supposed to detest and abhor. The things of the world. Television, radio, satanic music, <laughs> contemporary Christian music. <coughs> Beg your pardon. <coughs> And see, the consequence of you allowing these things into your house, allowing these things into your mind, into your ears, through your eyes, what you see and hear, you can become an accursed thing. It will not affect your salvation, Church of the Living God, but it's going to wreck your life wonderfully. Comprende? Now go now to the book of Acts. Go now to the book of Acts. We're going to see in the scriptures within the current dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, consequence. Acts chapter 5. Well, I'm having all kinds of trouble trying to get to where I need to get. Okay, Acts chapter 5. Verses 1 on to verse 11. Okay? Acts chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 11. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession, and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? And the Lord is that spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. And to keep back part of the price of the land, whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? You're looking at that. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Lying to God. <sighs> and Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. Dead. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. <laughs> you better be careful if you're lying to the Lord. Who do you think you're going to pull one over on the Lord? He can drop you like that. Then take you home. We'll look at that verse here in a little bit. But, and the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me, whether ye sold the land for so much? And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, Can, can you picture this? <laughs> 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 Peter, then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried the, thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all 
the church, and upon as many as heard these things. Great fear. Fear the Lord. Lie to God. He can drop you just like that. And about that, about that, very quickly, of course, of course, I've already addressed this in uh, a video before. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. We're only going to work at, I'll look at one verse here, but here's the point again. Church of the living God, you are sealed, eternally secure, you're going to heaven, but verse, uh, not second, first Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. <laughs> Go ahead and read it for me, Brother Alexander. <laughs> to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. You mess around with sin, give yourself over to it willfully, okay, willfully. What, it, what, there's this, oops, I accidentally fell into sin? The Lord rebuke you, you think like that. See, you're justifying sin, you do that. Like, da, 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 oops, oops, I stepped into sin. No, no. I'm addressing you, the church of the living God. There are no oopsies. There are no oopsies. It's a willful sin. What? Have you no rule over your own spirit? Again, God's not pointing a gun at your head making you to do anything. Satan ain't pointing a gun at your head. Making you do anything. You gotta be careful. Because the consequences of what you are doing could lead to your death. Well, good, then I'll go to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Church of the living God, yes. Where are you go what's your standing gonna be? Can you imagine what it would be like for you? To get there up in heaven after the judgment seat of Christ, which is going to be a terrifying event. Can you picture this? The Lord looking at you, who, who uh, was given over to the destruction of the flesh. Yes, you're going to heaven, but looking at you like, go on, just, just go, yeah, go. Yeah, go. Yeah, you're in. Yeah, go. Watch and you go in. Can you, from Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, can you imagine that? That. Yeah, come on. Come on. That's what, is that what you want? Really? Be up in heaven knowing that because, see, the Lord gave his word. And the scriptures cannot be broken. Okay? The Lord is not going to contradict his own word. Not going to happen. Okay? Remember that. But you get up there. And have the Lord ashamed that you're in heaven? Roll that around in your head a little bit, okay? Seriously. Roll that around in your head a little bit. Go now to Romans. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2 verses 3 on to verse 11. 
Romans chapter 2, verses 3 on to verse 11. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness, and forbearance, and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impentient heart, not willing to uh, bend, not willing to kneel, but after thy hardness and impentient heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath, and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. The righteous judgment of God. God is going to reward you according to your works. Whether they be good or whether they be evil. Again, you wicked heretics. I'm not talking about uh, eternally, salvifically. I already addressed that. Okay? So get over yourself. You want to go ahead and justify your sin? You ain't saved anyway. Get saved. But, again, the righteous judgment of God. God is a righteous judge. And he's going to reward you for your works, whether they be good or whether they be evil. Let's continue. Verse 6. Who will render to every man according to his deeds. I should have just shut up with that and let the scriptures speak for themselves. Beg your pardon. <laughs> to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Okay? Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. Okay? God is a righteous judge. Okay? Okay? If you're lost, you need to get saved because your recompense that's waiting for you is hell where you're going to burn for eternity in darkness. You need to get saved. But for you, the church of the living God, you're going to heaven. But how you are living is it shaming our Lord? Is it bringing reproach upon the scriptures which he has exalted above even his own name? He staked everything on his word, the scriptures. Again, you're messing around in sin and you get up there and the Lord's like, yeah, yeah, go, go on. Go on. Go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know, man. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Now, here in Romans chapter 6 is talking about the converted man specifically because by the time you reach if the Lord uses you to guide someone onto himself through the Romans road going through the scriptures by Romans chapter 5 you're gonna know what kind of a individual you're dealing with okay okay you get that the uh, Pauline epistles is doctrine for us today in the time of the Gentiles okay absolutely but note this in Romans chapter 6, verses 19 on to verse 23. Romans chapter 6, verses 19 on to verse 23. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, 
Even so now, yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. There again, the easy believism heretics, the cheap gracers are like, well, see, it doesn't matter. You don't have to. Making light of sin. Destroying people's lives. Making them unclean. Making them repugnant in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Light on sin. Yeah. Continue it. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? Are you ashamed of uh, the things you did in your lost life? Hello, hi. Tell me something. Tell me something. You want to revert back, you Church of the Living God. You want to go back to your vomit and do those things that you used to do and then justify them? Do you realize what kind of consequences that could happen? The Lord could take you out just like that. Your testimony is going to be shot. You won't be used of the, of the Lord the way he could have used you or should have used you, you could say, right? We're going to get to that one. Oh, Oh, don't you worry. We're going to get to that one. The, well, God could still use you. Wait for that. Wait for that. Yeah. Okay? You, the church of the living God, you uh, decide to go back to the old man or the old woman, okay? And always resist the Holy Ghost. And refuse to walk according to the scriptures. He can kill you take you out of the way or he can just put you there on the shelf and make you rot your recompense slowly rot away gonna be in heaven but then again again keep this in your mind the the Lord after the horrifying judgment seat of Christ okay <laughs> you'll be like he'll be like Go, go, just, just go. Yeah. Hey, you. You think, I, I know you think you're safe, but it's. You, you're okay with that. Oh, at least I'm in heaven. Yeah, you're okay with that. You're not saved to begin with, but come on. Come on. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. To hand one over unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, Church of the Living God. Okay, you've earned it. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Now, we read Romans chapter 8 in the previous video. Okay. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 on to verse 13. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 on to verse 13. Remember this. Consequences. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, a lost person and a saved person, okay? A person, spirit, soul, and body, okay? Lost person has nothing to do with the Lord. The things of the Lord are foolishness unto him because they cannot discern them because they are spiritually discerned, okay? 
but you, the church of the living God, who have God the Father living within you, okay, and you decide to go after the flesh, to live after the flesh, while the Lord is within you, screaming at you, hopefully, unless he's like, you want to live like that? Fine, go ahead. You're going to pay for it. Okay? Okay? Are you, are you spiritually minded? Or are you lost on what's coming on next on the television? Or do you just love that contemporary Christian music? That... The mind control music. Remember the Corinthians. They were carnal. Okay? They were carnal. And look at all the mess that they got into. Is that what you want? Let's continue. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. <clears throat> because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is neither subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. But then, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, capital S, if so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. You're saved and born again, the Spirit of God dwell in you. Okay? Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, and, uh, note that, the, the Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, <laughs> the, the Holy Ghost, the, the Lord is that Spirit, one God, okay? Father, let's continue. He is none of His. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal, your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live, look at this admonition here. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Well, we're all going to die. <laughs> if you say something like that, to defend your sin. You ain't saved. What, what's more important? Your sin? Or the Lord Jesus Christ, people? Come on. If that's in your head. If that's your go-to. Well, we're all going to die anyway. Mm. <laughs> you have some problems. Let's continue. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, suppress, put down, ye shall live. Now, another thing about this, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 on to verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 on to verse 8. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he proposeth in his heart, so let him give, 
not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. You reap what you sow. Okay? Now, see, the problem is, whenever someone goes to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, what's the first thing you think of? Right? About... Uh, sowing, which in context we would have to read the entire chapter. Okay? But what's the first thing you think of, right? Money. And it's not always money. There are other things. Food, raiment, tangible gifts, property. Okay? See, because of Roman Catholic uh, prosperity preachers, them heretics, who come to stuff like this and use that to get money out of you, okay? Because of that, a lot of us, when you hear this kind of stuff, you right away think about money. Don't you? And it's beyond that. There are other things. But there again... The principle is, verse 6, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And verse 7 is proof that we aren't required to give 10% tithe to a church building because ye are the building, the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Okay? You reap what you sow. Whether it be good or whether it be evil, how are you sowing, brother, sister? How are you sowing? How are you sowing? Galatians. Now, Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1, under verse 10. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1, under verse 10. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted, tempted to be proud. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. And what can that? And what can happen there? You can uh, run into pride. And a haughty spirit goes before a fall. Only by pride cometh contention. See, let's continue. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also Reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Look at verse 7. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. How are you sowing? How are you sowing? Do you love the things of the world? 
or the things that be of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Which one is it? You can't have it both ways. Which one is it? And the consequences. Oh, the consequences. Can be costly. You could be dropped dead. Diseases. Memories. That won't go away. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Again, again. The horrific judgment seat of Christ. It's going to be scary. Going to actually be able to see the Lord. Scary stuff. Do you want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, or... What is it, brother? What is it? But see, now, there are those out there, well, see, God can still use you. Even if you mess up, even if you make a mess of your life, God can still use you. Yes. But let's be honest, brethren. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. But see, those who say that kind of thing like to hang on to their sin and justify their sin. And you know what they you know who they point to the most most all, almost all the time? David. They say, look at King David, okay? He committed adultery. He killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword of the children of Ammon, okay? He did all that, yes, yes. And see, God still used him. Hey, Jesus Christ, God our Father, is referred to as the Son of David, meaning his kingship. That's uh, when they say Son of David, meaning king. King. Okay, that's what that means. He was not David's literal son. But no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But they say, hey, look at David. See, David did murder, adultery. Okay. He was still used mightily of God. So don't worry about it. Right. But what did it cost David? What did it cost David? See, a lot of people will say, will mention to you about David, about how he sinned and yet he was still used of God mightily. But you know what they don't like to talk to you about? 2 Samuel chapter 12. 2 Samuel chapter 12. Now again, the backstory is like we said, okay? Joab was out doing the fighting when King David should have been with them, okay? King David was just basking in his own self, enjoying the fact that God had blessed him, and so on and so forth. He saw, he got up from his bed when he should have been out with Joab, okay? He saw Bathsheba bathing herself. And he saw her and said, ooh, that good looking woman. Called her on to him. He lay with her, and she was with child. There you go, Brother Matthew. She became with child, and she was with child of David. David calls Uriah the Hittite from the battle, gets him there, gets him drunk, hoping that Uriah will go home and lie with his wife so he could cover up his sin. Uriah wouldn't do it. So eventually, David signed Uriah's death warrant, Put it in Uriah's hand. Uriah gave it onto Joab, and Joab read it. Put him at the place where the hottest fighting was, and pss, they killed Uriah. Okay. Thus we read Second Samuel chapter twelve, verses one on to verse seventeen. God, God can still use you. But keep this in your mind the next time you're trying to justify your sin. Second 
2 Samuel chapter 12. Did I say 13? Excuse me, chapter 12. Verses 1 on to verse 17. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him, and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought up, which he had bought and nursed up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat at his own at his own it did eat of his own meat, excuse me, and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveller unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. Check this out. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. See? It's like, oh, check this out. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, that man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Oh, isn't he so righteous, huh? Yeah, yeah, so righteous. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thou art the man. See, he was hiding by being so, oh, yeah. David knew. David knew he had messed up, but see, he was just fine. And he was hiding it by getting all this righteous indignation when it was Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house, and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. Look at this. Look at this. And if that had been too little... I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Get the gravity of that. God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, saying unto David, and if that had been too little, what? What I gave you wasn't enough. You had to go and sin and get Bathsheba. Huh? Huh? What I gave you, my provision onto you, wasn't good enough. You had to go in sin to fulfill your lust. And if that had been too little, verse 9, Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, God can still use you. Yeah, he can. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me. And has taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor. And he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son, S-U-N. For thou didst it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. Now, note what note David's reaction. 
See, King Saul, before David, was confronted in a similar manner by Samuel. But what did Saul do? Uh, check out that one video. It's always someone else's fault. I get into it in that video. But he's like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I, I'm at fault. But, 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 but it was the people. It was the people. Look what David did. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. See, there's grace. Okay, yeah. David, according to the law, should have died. According to the law, they should even even though he was king, they should have killed him. David, for his sin, should have died. But that, oh, but God didn't kill him. Yes. Yes. He was gracious unto David. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. But, verse 14, How be it, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. Think about this. Church of the living God, you give yourself over to your sin. You justify your sin. What is that bringing forth? You're making the Lord Jesus Christ look bad. You are offending him. You are basically spitting upon his word. You are spitting upon the Lord. Is that Oh, I don't care if I'm an armpit or or anything, I, so long as I get into heaven. But yet you're justifying your sin? There's no chastisement? There is chastisement? It's You're not taking it to heart? Do you even truly care about the Lord Jesus Christ, who loved you and died for you? Look at that. But because, because of this deed, you got to be very careful about what you do out there. Because, because, how be it? How be it? Because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. James, go to James real quickly, James really quickly, okay, James chapter 1, verses 14 and verse 15, James chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, okay, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed, note this, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Yeah. You mess up in sin. You do something very egregious. Yeah, the Lord can still use you. But you're going to pay a heavy price and you're either not saved or you're kind of stupid if you say well I don't care sin's that important to you huh yeah good luck with that And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted and went in, and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose, and went to him, to raise him up from the earth, but he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. And of course the child died. David went through some suffering, but guess what, that wasn't it, okay? Go to 2 Samuel 13, verses 1 on to verse 5. 
Okay, we're going to be skipping around in this chapter. Okay? The sword will never depart from thine house. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar, and Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Ew. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But check this out. But Ammon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimei, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. Hold oh, your place. Here, you ought to know where I'm going with this. Genesis chapter 3. Verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Subtle. Oh, beg your pardon, excuse me. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. Important note that. <laughs> and look at this. Instead of saying, uh, Dude, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? What? Is there something wrong with you? Why are you, why are you doing that? Ew. And he said unto him, this is what he tells him. Why art thou being why art thou being the king's son lean from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Great advice. Lay thee down on thy bed and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat, and dress the meat in my sight that I may see it and eat it at her hand. Now he does that, and then she comes in, makes cakes for him, okay, and he tells, says, everybody get out, so she can hand feed me, because he was so sick. Check this out, okay, verses 22 on to verse 29 now, okay, verses 22 on to verse 29. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. I skipped one, excuse me. Verses uh, 11, uh, uh, 11, beg your pardon, I was looking at my notes wrong. Verses 11 on to verse 17, beg your pardon, beg your pardon, okay. Verses 11 on to verse 17. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come, lie with me, my sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me. For no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. And I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now, now, now know what she says, okay? According to the scripture, you weren't supposed to lie with your sister like that, okay? That's forbidden in scripture, okay? In the law. Okay, they did it before the law because the gene pool was not as corrupt as it is today. Totally different subject, but forbidden in scripture uh, upon the giving of the law. Okay, but look at what she says. She's pleading for him, for his sake, and her own. But this shows the, um, the um, kind of individual that this Tamar was. Now therefore I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. Howbeit he would not hearken unto her, but being stronger than he than she forced her and lay with her. Now remember here in verse um, verses uh, one and two, especially verse two, uh, two, and Amnon was so vexed that he felt, felt sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. And look at verse 1. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar, and Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Loved her. 
Look at verse 15. Then Ammon hated her exceedingly. Loved her or just lusted after her? So that he hated her, so that the hatred wherewith that he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had, wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. The vanity of the fulfillment of your sin. Oh, I gotta have it, I gotta have it. And then afterwards, and um, I really doubt that I am uh, and uh, um, that Ammon is in heaven, just so you know. But after he fulfilled his lust, he hated her. But yet he was so sick. I, I love her so much. I gotta have her. After he had her, went went crazy. It was lust. It wasn't love. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone, get out. And she said unto him, and, and look at this, this Tamar was a godly woman. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. He forced her, according to the law, now she's his. He's supposed to marry her. Okay? She, he forced her. Now he hates her. And she pleaded with him. It's like, hey, hey okay, okay, stop, stop. Hold up, hold up. At least, uh, at least talk to the king. Okay? And even after that, even after that, Tamar's like, don't send me away, okay? You, you, you've done this. According to the law, I'm supposed to be yours now. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. Yeah. Now, verses 22 on to verse 29. Consequences. But when King David heard all these things, he was very wroth. What do you do about it? Nothing. And Absalom spake unto his brother Amnon neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon, because he had forced his sister Tamar. And it came to pass after two full years that Absalom had sheep shears in Bel Hazor, which is beside Ephraim. And Absalom invited all the king's sons. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold now, Thy servant hath sheep shears. Let the king, I beseech thee, and his servants go with thy servant. And the king said unto Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not all let us not all not let us not all now go, lest we be chargeable unto thee. And he pressed him, howbeit he would not go, but blessed him. Then said Absalom, If not, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said unto him, Why should he go with thee? But Absalom pressed him that he that he let Ammon, Ammon and all the king's sons go with him. Now Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Mark ye now, when Ammon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say unto you, Smite Ammon, then kill him. Fear not, have not I commanded you? Be courageous and be valiant. And the servants of Absalom did unto Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and every man got him up upon his mule and fled. One could only wonder what would have happened if King David had gone to that thing, right? Would Absalom then would have tried to kill King David? Or just make a spectacle? One never knows. Okay? These are the sons of David killing themselves. Consequence. The sword will never depart from his house. Fighting amongst each other. Oh yeah, I can still use you. 
But look at how he's, look at what he's suffering already in the scriptures here. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 18. We're going to see just how David paid for it, even though God used him. Second Samuel chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 18. And it came to pass after this, that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses, and fifty men to run before him. And Absalom rose up early, and stood beside the wall, and stood beside the way of the gate. And it was so, that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him, and said, Of what city art thou? And he said, Thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. And Absalom said unto him, See, thy matters are good and right. But there is no man deputed of the king to hear thee. Absalom said, Moreover, Oh, that I were made judge in the land, that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. And so Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel, rising evil out of his own house. And it came to pass after 40 years that Absalom, uh, that means that's how old Absalom was. Okay? That means how that's how old Absalom was. The new modern Bible perversions messed us up. I think I even addressed that in uh, an old video of mine. But, okay? And it came to pass after 40 years that Absalom said unto the king, I pray thee, let me go and pay my vow, which I have vowed unto the Lord in Hebron. For thy servant vowed a vow while I abode at Geshur in Syria, saying, If the Lord shall bring me again indeed to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. And the king said unto him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as ye hear the sound of the trumpet, then ye shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. And with Absalom went two hundred men out of Jerusalem that were called, and they went in their simplicity, and they knew not anything. And Absalom went, and Absalom sent Ahithophel, ah, excuse me, and Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gileonite, David's counselor from the city, even from Gihon, Gilo, excuse me, while he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy was strong. For the people increased continually with Absalom. And it came and there came a messenger to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. And David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly, and bring evil upon us, and smite the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servants said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. And the king went forth, and all his household after him. And the king left ten women, which were concubines, to keep the house. And the king went forth, and all the people after him, and tarried in a place that was, a far, that was far off. And all his servants passed on beside him, and all the Carathites, and all the Pelathites, and all the Gittites, six hundred men, which came after him from Gath, passed on before the king. So Absalom stole the kingdom away from him, and the king was forced out because of such. Yeah, God still used him. Yeah, God still used him. Now, go to chapter 16. Verses 3 under verse 14. 
2 Samuel 16, verses 3 on to verse 14. And the king said, And where is thy master's son? My, uh, yes. And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he's talking about Mephibosheth. Ziba deceives King David. Okay. And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abideth at Jerusalem. For he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Ziba, Behold, thine are all that pertained unto Mephibosheth. And Ziba said, I humbly beseech thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, my lord, O king. Ziba deceived the king there. Let's continue. And when King David came to Bahura, behold, Thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came. And he cast stones at David and at all the servants of King David. And all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shimei when he cursed, Come out, come out, thou bloody man, and thou man of Belial. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. God still used him. Then said Abiashai, the son of Zariah, unto the king, why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. Note this. Note this. And the king said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zariah? So let him curse. Because the Lord has said unto him, unto him Curse David. Who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? Do you think David put two and two together and came up with 36? Or he put two and two together and came up with four? I think it's pretty safe to say David figured out what was going on and why it was going on. Don't you? God still used them. And David said to Abiashai and to all his servants, Behold, my son which came forth of my bowels seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? Let him alone. Let him curse. For the Lord hath bidden him. It may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction and that the Lord will requite me good for his cursing this day. And as David and his men went by the way, Shimei went along along on the hill's side over against him, and cursed as he went, and threw stones at him and cast dust. And you can cross-reference this with 2 Samuel chapter 19, verses 16 on to verse 23, where Shimei was one of the first ones to go to repent to King David. And then you'll learn later on that King David said to Solomon, hey, watch out for this guy. And Shimei eventually gets by King Solomon. God still used him. 1 Samuel chapter 20 verses 1 on to verse 6. Absalom gets taken care of. King goes back. Okay? Ammon and Tamar. Absalom. Shimei throwing stones at him. Uh, also within there, Absalom uh, laid with the concubines on top of the house, uh, making himself odious to David. Second Samuel 20, verses 1 on to verse 6. And there happened to be there a man of Belial, whose name was Sheba, the son of Bichri, a Benjamite. And he blew a trumpet and said, We 
Have no part in David, neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tent, O Israel. So every man of Israel went up from after David and followed Sheba the son of Bichri. But the men of Judah clave unto their king from Jordan even to Jerusalem. And David came to his house at Jerusalem. And the king took the ten women, the ten women, his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house, and put them in ward and fed them, but went not in unto them. So they were shut up unto the day of their death, living in widowhood, because they were defiled by Absalom. Then said the king to Amasa, Assemble me the men of Judah within three days, and be thou here present. So Amasa went to assemble the men of Judah, but he tarried longer than the set time which he had appointed him. And David said to Abishai, Now shall Sheba the son of Bichri do us more harm than did Absalom. Take thou thy Lord's servants, and pursue after him, lest he get him fenced cities, and escape us. And he's right. So, Sheba revolted against the king. But God still used David. And he did. And, now, consequences for things that he really didn't have anything to do with. Okay? About King Saul. David suffered for what Saul did. 2 Samuel 21, verses 1 and 2. Then there was a famine in the days of David three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. It's for Saul. See, David was uh, suffering the consequence of something Saul did. God still used David, though. He sure did. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the, chil and the children of Israel had sworn unto them. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Rahab the harlot, or Rahab the harlot, uh, when the spies uh, came to Jericho. Okay? These are her, uh, the descendants of Rahab. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. And here David is dealing with that. Now one could argue, well, maybe he would have dealt with that anyway. That's a logical argument, but the sword shall never depart from thine house. God still used him. And finally, chapter 24. Verses 1 on to verse 17. 2 Samuel 24, verses 1 on to verse 17. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them. Now, elsewhere in the scriptures, it says that Satan moved David. Or, uh, let's, let's find that. Let's find that. Uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 21. Hold your place here. 1 Chronicles chapter 21. 1 Chronicles chapter 21. I think I've addressed this in a video before. Actually, I'm pretty sure, but for sake of this, come on, work with me, figures. Work with me. We're going to look at this. First uh, Chronicles chapter 21. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1, and, the, and again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to, to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. Now that's not a contradiction. You read Job chapter 1 and 2, you'll see 
Satan needs God's permission. So God allowed Satan to do this to David. How did the Lord move David to do this? By allowing Satan to go to do that. It's not a contradiction, just so you know. Okay, let's continue. For the king said to Joab, the captain of the host, which was with him, Go now through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, and number ye the people, that I may know the number of the people. Why do you want to do that? A little pride. Let's continue. And Joab said unto the king, Now the Lord thy God add unto the people, how, how many soever they be, an hundredfold, and that the eyes of my lord the king may see it. But why doth my lord the king delight in this thing? Notwithstanding, the king's word prevailed against Joab and against the captains of the host. And Joab and the captains of the host went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. And they passed over Jordan and pitched in Arar, on the right side of the city that lieth in the midst of the river of Gad, and toward Jazir. Then they came to Gilead, and to the land of Ta Ta Tatim Hadeshi, Tatim Tatim Hodshi, beg your pardon. <laughs> and they came to Danjan, and about to Zidon, and came to the stronghold of Tyre, and to all the cities of the Hivites and of the Canaanites. And they went out to the south of Judah, even to Beersheba. So when they had gone through all the land. They came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and twenty days. And Joab gave up the sum of the number of the people unto the king. And there were in Israel eight hundred thousand valiant men that drew the sword. And the men of Judah were five hundred thousand men. Pretty big army, isn't it? And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, Oh boy. I have sinned greatly in that I have done, and now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away thy, uh, the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. God still used him. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Now, imagine, try to, try to wrap your head around this. Go and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. See, he chose to go, you know, he chose, to, uh, he allowed Satan to, you know, to move him to number the people of Israel. He was, God wasn't holding a gun to his head, neither was the devil, okay? He chose to do this, and now he's giving him three choices. So Gad came to David and told him, and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land? Or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies, while they pursue thee? Or that there be three days pestilence in thy land? Now advise, and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. Note the uh, personal pronoun. Thee, thine, thee, thy. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Yeah, none of it's good. He chose to number the people. He chose... To lie with Bathsheba. And David said unto Gad, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. And let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba 70,000 men. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Stay now thine hand. 
And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Aruna, the Jebusite. And David spake unto, note this, and David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly, but these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. Hey, here's, a, here's something for you to think about. Church of the living God. Yeah. God still did use David. Yes, he did. But see, you give yourself over to your sin, you justify it, yada, yada. It, it might not only affect you. Note in, oh wow, thank you, pardon. Note in verse 13, the thee, thine, thee, thy. It could have effect on others as well. Not, not to mention, you're making the Lord look bad. Wrap your head around that a little bit, brethren. And Gad came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. And David, according to the saying of Gad, went up as the Lord commanded. And then he went, and I know I said to 17, but uh, he went up, and offered sacrifice unto the Lord, built an altar, okay? Yeah, God still did use King David. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. God can still use you, yes. When you mess up, you, you do contrary to the scriptures, you spit on the Lord, you spit on his word. There's no contrition. There's no sanctification. You are of the world. Yeah, God can still use you. But you are going to pay a heavy price. That's why we looked at all this. They say, remember, God still used David. Yeah, yeah. And what did it cost him? Is your sin worth a similar price to what King David paid. You think about that. You think about that, Church of the Living God. Have you counted the cost? God isn't just God. God is a God of recompense. Let's remember the admonition in Galatians. Okay, go back there to Galatians chapter 6. Come on, work with me, fingers. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. God is a God of recompense. God is a God of judgment. You reap what you sow, Church of the Living God. Just because, now again, like I said, um, he can't absolve you from suffering those con some consequences, yes. But look at what happened to David. He suffered a consequence for something that he wasn't even involved in that happened under the reign of King Saul. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Look what it cost David. We had other scriptures to go through, but my wife just got home finally, praise the Lord. And um, I think you got the point. I think you got the point.
Be aware, brethren. Church of the living God. And even you lost people. And you fakes, especially. You reap what you sow. Have you counted the cost? Is it worth it? What's more important to you? Your sin? Or the Lord Jesus Christ? Anyway, brethren, that's it for this video. Hopefully, uh, I think I got, I got it all done. Yay. <laughs> um, I love you, Church of the Living God, brothers and sisters. I'm praying for you. Pray for one another. And um, the Lord be glorified. That's that's all, all that I seek, that the Lord be glorified. I love you. I'm going to upload these videos here in a little bit. And we will see you in the next video. I love you.